best opportunity cows. available and, uh, to be successful. Illinois. Where are you from? What state are you His want? best opportunity with all of the cars coming at him. Why would he wait for the car to turn and all the way down here before he opens fire? I asked. We got a lady from a lot of the burning coming down here. Oswald has a lot of time. If he missed the first shot, he missed one. I don't know if it no, it puts up. No, it puts up. People were lining the streets there. All the cars are right behind them. The car would have had to come down the same damn road. He'd have got the same shots anyway. Why wouldn't you take the easier ones? The ones where it's coming at you. Right, it's directly as a, as a sniper shooting, you got a shot here where the car is going away from them and dropping. That's the most difficult shot imaginable. With a target that's going down and away from you and dropping? With a bolt action rifle. The motorcade the morning the motorcade. The the point of the matter is if you if you're in that window, you're gonna take the shot where it comes down the street right at you. And why would and then I had one bozo tell me, no you wouldn't, because then they could look up and see the gun. No, they wouldn't. You open the window, you're back from the window and the barrel's not even out the window. You could get three shots up, up there before coming at you, before they even know where to shot. You're an Navy SEAL. Do you think Oswald, if he would have been killed, he thought that line was Yeah, because he was right out of the Marine Corps. If he hadn't been out of the Marine Corps for a couple of years. 1959, four years. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been out 30, and I, I still remember I, I, it. You know, Wait a minute. But, I've been out 30, and I still remember it. it Jesse, you were a Navy SEAL. You were better trained. He was no, a, no. He, yeah. Are you telling me the Marines are not he highly was a trained? He was I, I was in the Army. I, he scored high on his marksman yeah. suit. No, he, he was a marksman, which is middle. Yeah. Well, he was a sharpshooter. Marksman's the lowest. Marksman's the lowest. No, it's marksman, sharpshooter, expert. No, he was a marksman. Where were they dead? Well, then he was second. He said he was Mark. He was Mark. Sharpshooter. Wait a minute now. You've just been right putting that out. The seconds after the shooting by a cop and the building manager. You could just blow away the president. The first thing in your mind is to run down to the second floor and have a coat. He ran out the way out. He ran out the front. He would run out. He walked, walked out the front. I'm sure he said he should have ran out the back. If you're in you know, an incident like that where everybody's excited, you go out the front and then run out the be less potential. Let me, let me ask like you I said, he's the coolest customer I've ever seen. He has a coat. This is isn't out of breath. Things go better. In 1977, Bill O'Reilly was on Channel 8 Dallas, and he asked to speak to J. Walt Moore because he alleged that B. Harvey Oswald was employed by the CIA. Now, why did the CIA create all these files? Because O'Reilly asked this question. I don't know either. Maybe O'Reilly will talk about them tonight. Well, I was and what's interesting is, if, if here's, here's your other common sense point. If he's who they say he was, this disgruntled little Marine that hated capitalism, became a communist sympathizer, and decided to kill the president, why would anything have Ladies to be put in the National Archives our because JFK of national Lancer security? Program How could a disgruntled Marine fly for the our national security we are going to in any way, shape, or form? Well, that tells know, you right know. there. Uh, Jesus Christ, why would they do that? I don't, I don't know, telling us I don't know what those records are. Why did they have to lock them? There, there, there might have been an original concern about it. There might have been some of the stuff that came from about uh, the attempts to kill Pastor by Kennedy. They and they thought that of stuff. all that, huh? No, no, that point they, they, may have, they may have been concerned that that was coming up. But Bobby Kennedy was very concerned also at the time. It was Bobby Kennedy, supposedly, who, and uh, Washington said, let's hurry up with this autopsy, because I, you know, he concluded that it was done. He concluded that Oswald was the killer and said, let's go, let's go through this rather quickly. And, and you know, what, now, what, what about well, the, I'll put it about to you this way. It's the Dallas PD should be pat on the back for the greatest piece of police work in the Hamilton history. Because they have no one that saw him do it, right? Then supposedly he killed Tippett. Well, I find it interesting that they found three shell casings there and Oswald had a revolver. Now, how did the shell casings get on the ground from a revolver? 
a revolver does not expend shell casing. So he must have, after shooting Tippett, he must have cleaned his weapon and left the casings <laughs> there, you know, so that they could be found and traced to him. You know, that's, what I, that's certainly what I did. If I'd have had a revolver, the first thing I'd have thought of is, hey, let me dump my casings by the body here. You know, I'm not going to walk off. One of the okay, now wait a minute now, wait a minute. Then you've had the murder of the president, you've had the murder of the police officer, and then a call comes in and says, you know what? This sinister looking guy sent a cop when they had the murder of the president and a police officer gunned down in the street, why would they be sending cops to this theater to f get somebody who didn't buy they a 30 second exactly 30 who they were ticket? Getting. <laughs> and why did 10 stars show up? And why was a description of Oswald put out immediately after the assassination that fit him perfect? Well, they, no one saw him shoot. No, they took, they took, a, they took an attendance at the <laughs> No, they did. That's right course. up there at the museum. Wait a minute, the time out. The museum is full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. 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 So you're telling me through all this chaos, one person is missing no, from at that are, work? More. And they would they put APBs out on all these people? No, they didn't. They put it out on one person. Why didn't they put it out on everybody they, that was they missing there? One or two of them, in fact, according to... He was, he was the only one missing. No, they said there were a few unaccounted for, but he was one of them. How many? They didn't say how many. But he was... He well, then why, would, well then why would they send his description out if there were more people missing? Sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> yeah, they're getting to them. Yes, you do. They're getting to them. Yes, you do. Hey, no, it's common sense. Common sense. View it from common sense. Nothing adds up with common logic. Don't add up. Yes, Don't add up. So is he set up? He's a, well, let me put it to you this way. After he's arrested, let's say hypothetically he did do it. Why would he use the term patsy? Why would that word come out of it? When the press first said in return, they said, I'm just a patsy. If he did this alone, why would he use that term? Well, I'm, I'm asking... Governor, do you want to get up there the for the, uh, the moment? Yeah. Silence? Yeah. Let's, let's go. Why would he use the term Patsy? To describe himself. And plus, if he did it, wouldn't he want the world to know? He did it for a cause. He would stand up and say, you're goddamn right I did it because I'm a martyr. Why did he come in with a package that morning? Why did he leave the ring at his... Uh, and his wife $170. Why did he have a wall? Curtain, curtain rods were in Well, package. how about the guy who gave him the ride to work that said the gun wasn't in there and it didn't fit? Right, because it wasn't big enough for a, yeah. a yeah. rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The rifle yeah. also short. that was it's found up there short. is a 1,200 foot five. per second wet, low to medium. Mm -hmm. uh, run run again that gun. Did you get a picture of me? You always tell me it's the last picture and you lie to me every time you lie to me. It's never the last. I know. Thank you. I'm going to get up there. Thank you so much. Governor Ventura, what is my interest in coming down here? Same as yours. Really? I thought maybe you had been uh, here in Dallas with you, Jesse. No, I flew down just for this. Right here. Oh, that's Jesse, wonderful. Can I get a picture with you? Do it fast. Right here. Okay. Thank you for all you do, Jesse. Thank you very much. Yes, he was. Kind of like. What do you mean? What is it? To get the point. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. Does, does, does Ed believe that Oswald did it? Me.
says unequivocally Lyndon Baines Johnson killed President Kennedy. Yeah. That's that's what Bar McClellan says. And he was in the law firm and he said that Ed Clark, he was there when Clark got his two million dollar payoff. He helped get it for him in the early seventies for doing the job. Do you think well, he also, well, he also says in the book, he said there was an ATF agent that was killed years ago. They called it a suicide in the 1980s. It was brought back up in front of the grand jury. They declared it a homicide. And Johnson, Clark, and Wallace were all indicted for murder, but they couldn't serve the indictment because they're all dead. So he, it, it wasn't like he hadn't killed before. One of those five gunshot suicides, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. It was a guy that did the schematic drawings for the Warren Commission. Using ver only verbal, verbal testimony oh. or verbal instructions from Hume okay. and Boswell. Okay. I'm a friend of Bob McClellan's, and I'm the one who got him on the History Channel. You were on that, weren't you? Yeah, I'm on it, so I was the chief consultant. Oh, okay, with so, Bob McClellan? Yeah. I heard he's having trouble getting uh, people to talk about his book and put him on the air. Is that true? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. No, I heard, like, Good Morning America canceled him and things like that. And they well, the press is on with Valenti now because he, he tried to put an injunction on the third hour. Now there's a little disclaimer before the... the, the yeah, the guilty Excuse men, me. and uh, but they're still in it. And what they, the History Channel did, it was the third hour, the first time it ran on Monday, but Friday they put it on at eight, which they knew was the most important one. And uh, I think that's their way of kind of sticking it to Berlin. So I just want to personally thank you for having the courage to stand up here, but then I'm doing it too. You are, you are. But I've been doing it for 40 years. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Engelman, fellow researcher. To me, it's just a case of. Uh, you know, when I was 12 years old, and I think I've been lying to you. And, uh, I was 16, and, same idea. And so for me, it's a case of how can you believe history when you get a clear opportunity where they've lied? Can I get a picture of it? What else do they lie about then? Is it ready to go? Is it, ready to go? Can you, is it glowing? Okay, guys. I don't know. I can't tell. Well, we're going to find out. Going? Okay. Good, I guess. Beyond the night at six. Why don't you try one more? One more? Yeah. Might Rewind well. it for me there. Well, well if you see Barr, give him my best. I will. In uh, fact, tell him, tell him I'd like to have him on again. You, you should know. He called me Sunday, and he wanted me to go with him to Washington, D.C. He wanted to call a press conference and demand a reinvestigation. He told me that it was senatorial. Excuse me, me. He wanted me to come with him because we're on the same page. Just a little closer together. And I couldn't go because I was giving a lecture at a military yeah. mail. I, I went for out with Cyril Wax or something. Yes. But I'll, I'll keep in touch with him and I'll tell him. Yeah, yeah, tell him I'd like to have him on again. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book. I've got about 1,100 pages of the And I, just and I are going to keep yeah, going. Yeah, so later, after, 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 after the commemoration. I love Nigel's work, except I don't fully buy the French. Do you have any card or No, no, no. I fully don't buy the French. French wars are killing the That's beyond that. If you haven't seen these three hours yet, he has. Okay, you've yeah. got to see the three new hours, and okay. the third hour is all on the Texas thing and Johnson. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good, that. Governor. Okay? It's good, yeah. Once you see that, then... Uh, Where do you get that now? Because I've got the original ones. How do you get these well, new ones? The history, maybe the History Channel will be selling it. Okay. But, it, 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 you know, it's going to be on TV anyway. But uh, okay. check with the History I Channel. I this. I'm John Judge with the National Coalition of Political Assassinations. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, did an excellent job. I appreciate your courage. Do you have a card on you, sir? No, I try to stay low-key. I don't blame you. 
Did they, did they stick on that historian because they're getting so much black? I noticed on the episode last night, he came on and kind of gave it a little disclaimer that this is just one theory. Well, they, they did that because just the, the Lenti put a, uh, tried to put an injunction on it. So that must have been their way to... Why was Valenti trying to do that? You're talking about Jack Valenti? You and I will talk private about Valenti. Okay. Not bad maybe, maybe he has a few skeletons of his own tied in. Okay. In fact, I met him with Schwartz and if I remember right. That the, thing with, the thing with Barr is, and I think Barr would tell you this, if I go through with what I'm doing, we're, we're a one-two punch. I, I go beyond where he went. I believe in him, but I go beyond. How, how, but how do you go beyond? 40 years of research, Jesse. It, you know, well, uh, if you're interested in talking to me, you talk to Barr and we'll set it up. Oh, Even private. Could you stay between you two good looking women for a minute or just stand there? Oh, you forget the comments for that. No, this is something else. Well, see, I don't want to make turn me into a conference. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, I have not my computer trial on your head. I doubt it. Really? Really? So I know everybody's asking this, but why did you come down here today? Because it's uh, November the 22nd, 2003, 40 years to the exact minute that President Kennedy was murdered. How old were you at the time? Twelve. Tell me about how you heard the news? Well, we're, like all kids, we were in school at the time, and uh, they announced over the loudspeaker that President Kennedy had been shot, and then they announced that he had been killed. and. They told us that school was suspended and that we were to go home immediately. And that's basically what happened. Everyone very quietly, you know, it was kind of a scary thing being a 12-year-old and seeing a president, or not seeing it, but hearing that a president was murdered. And you did your show from here today? What's that? You did your show from here today? Or you just taped a segment? Uh, no, I taped nothing. Here. Oh. I, I, did, I did my show Wednesday. Oh. It'll air today. Okay. And what was your show focused on? Uh, this. I have Beverly Oliver. I have uh, 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 Aubrey Reich, and I have uh, uh, Professor Fetzer from UMB, who's written three very good books. You familiar with Fetzer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what's your feeling on what happened here? Well, my feeling is simply that I don't believe the Warren Commission. I don't believe the government's perspective of it. And that's good enough because if if I if I don't believe that, then it doesn't matter whether I have a, a belief of what I think happened here. No one will ever know what happened here. I just don't believe what the government told us happened here happened. Um, wondering how familiar you are with the, the area beyond this. Do you uh, know who G B Dealey was? How the plaza got its name? No. And. Uh, I heard you out there debating with somebody about the details of the conspiracy. You were talking about common sense. One common sense question I had people ask is, um, if the government had the ability to plan such an elaborate conspiracy, why would you have such an elaborate conspiracy in a public place? Because that's the best place to do it. I mean, why not have one person? No, you got, you got the government's government and government ops, military ops, CIA ops, all of the operations you want to talk about, they're all compartmentalized. Nobody, very few people know the whole picture. Very few. Everybody just knows their little piece of the operation. I have a good friend of mine that didn't realize he was part of the arms for hostages in the 80s until he saw it break on television. And then he turned and looked at me and said, oh, gee, I was part of that. And he was on C a member of SEAL Team 6, the anti-terrorist unit. And he was given a job to deliver something from point A to point B. That's all he knew. And, and, and then later on, he put two and two together and it made four, and he put four and four together and it made eight. But at the point of doing the job, he had no idea. And that's, and that's what, you know, and besides, why would someone come forward now to be called, what, a kook? Who, who of the mainstream media and government is going to believe anybody? 
They've got their definition. Right. Well, what I'm asking is, if you were a part of the conspiracy, planning the conspiracy, why would you do it in a public place with, fat, with photographs around? If you had that much power, wouldn't you plan a private location? Wouldn't you poison his food rather than shoot him in public where people are going to take pictures? I don't know. I've never did it. Why would you ask me that? I'm not a voice of experience on assassinations. Well, because I was never in the CIA. I'm just wondering why everybody looks at it after the fact, but nobody ever questions because, the common sense before because, the fact. Because, because, oh, did you want common sense? What's Adolf Hitler's famous quote? That if you tell a lie big enough, people will believe it. The bigger the lie, the easier it is to sell. But that speaks volumes. How easy is it that, that they sold us here? It doesn't seem very easy. Given all the I do. I think it's easy. It's 40 years. Nothing has changed. The government's position hasn't changed. We're all kooks. So We're all labeled. Any, do you think there's any way to actually get the truth then? Not really. There's Not anymore. No, you be well. You'll never. I don't think you'll ever get an, an admission that someone's going to admit. I think that. I think that one of the keys would be if they could get the uh, if they could get the uh, the psych psychiatrist records of that Bar McClellan talks about. Lyndon Johnson, at the very end of his life, apparently, like many people, had some problems before he went to meet his maker, and he had very heavy psychological sessions with a doctor who, of course, because of doctor-patient privileges, doesn't have to reveal anything. But as Bar McClellan said, if he could get those records, he believes Johnson confessed to it at that point in time. But again, that's only hearsay. Oh, it's program yeah, time. Yeah. 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 You can take this and go film whatever there.